Hello once again, Star Wars Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and today we're back with another regular unboxing. I hope you guys enjoyed a little change of pace with our uh, shelf talk, and we'll do some more shelf talk episodes uh, throughout the, the summer months, I think. Um, but today we have a couple more Disney uh, Star Wars crossovers. I seem to have like a lot more of these than I originally, originally thought. Uh, but um, they're a lot of fun, and I've received some good comments on them, so I'm excited to do that. Uh, before I get to that, though, just a couple of you know quick tidbits from the uh, from the news and everything. It just seems to be um, you know a little little. Uh, it seems like Star Wars is in a kind of a bad light um, these days with what with an underperforming uh, solo Star Wars story um, in the box office, and everybody trying to theorize what is the reason behind that and everything else. And I just, you know, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, my honest uh, feeling on that is simply the fact that, you know, it's probably a combination of a lot of things. I think when things like this happen, no one wants it to happen. No one aims for it to happen. I just feel like uh, things, something didn't add up the way it was supposed to and different things happened. My own personal theory, I think a lot of it had to do with just, you know, being so close to the um, the last Star Wars movie, and with the idea that you know Star Star Wars fans, even and casual fans, and you know not people like me, but people that are you know just that go to see Star Wars movies, you know when they come out, and that maybe they see it once and that's it. I just think think that they were not quite uh, ready for this. I think that um, it was still too soon for the Last Jedi. I think that they also maybe were confused. Um, they always think every Star Wars movie kind of happens in an order and they're a saga that connects to each other and when Rogue One came out, although it was very successful, I think a lot of people were thrown and maybe thought, um, wait a minute, where's, uh, where's Lee, where's Rey, where's Kylo Ren, not realizing that, that that's not the movie they're going to go see and then The Last Jedi came out and then they were, then they saw another one and they probably were like, well, I'm not, I don't know what this one is, it doesn't look like, there's no characters I recognize, I get it, it's about Han Solo and he's younger, and Chewie's there, and that's about the only recognizable thing, but maybe that's just not for me, or maybe not people. there are people that are just not interested in Han Solo, uh, people not interested in seeing a movie about his origin story, who knows, okay, whatever the, whatever the case may be, um, it's a combination of things, I've seen, I've seen it, I love it, the hardest part about this film, about this whole thing is that it's a good movie, it's a fun movie, and I certainly hope that in the future, and I do think this will happen, that in the future, as the movie gets released on uh, Blu-ray, and digital release, that people will watch it, people will come to appreciate it for what it is, a fun Star Wars themed movie. So, um, but as far as all the other stuff, a lot of negativity on the internet and everything else, I'm just, you know, I do what I always do, folks, and that is that I just try to keep things positive, keep things, um, you know, just on what, the things that I love, the things that I care about, um, about the Star Wars universe. Do I love every single little tiny itsy bitsy thing about Star Wars? No. There are things that I'm not a big fan of. I think that with new movies that come out and, and new directions that they're going to go in, I, I'm sure there's going to be more things that I'm not going to be, the, the, you know, 100% a fan of. But for me, it's more like little things. There's, there's, there's elements that I'm not a big fan of. It's, I, I never really look at an entire movie and think, oh, that whole thing was just horrible. I just don't see that, you know, and I don't really see that happening anytime soon because I just think that there's just too much care and too much thought and too much of a lot of people's hard work that goes into it. It never feels cheap. It never feels, it, you know, it just doesn't feel like something that isn't trying to, you know, tell a good story. And as long as they have that element and, and along with some great visuals and, and, you know, a good music score, uh, I feel that they'll always have some level of success. And let's not forget that, um, while the movie is just hitting 200 million domestic as of this uh, recording, you know, that is a failure on the part of what people think of uh, a Star Wars movie. Uh, however, it's not a failure in what people think of as a box office result. Uh, that 200 million is quite, quite successful. So, um, you know, take it as it is. So anyway, I'm rambling on enough about it. So, but I just thought of the Star Wars Disney crossover, and this does bring me back to a simpler time. I, ironically, that before Disney owned Star Wars, they had the, um, the freedom to do these great um, crossovers. So what do we have here? We have, in this series, we have Goofy as C-3PO. We have um, Donald Duck as Han Solo in Carbonite. 
we have <laughs> Bad Pete as uh, as um, Boba Fett, which, by the way, is the heaviest figure of all of them. We have um, Minnie Mouse as Princess Leia in the Boosh disguise. And we have Mickey Mouse as Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight. So this all clearly is a Return of the Jedi um, theme. So why don't we get started? And I'm actually going to move these guys over here. I think I'm going to end with Bad Pete. I, want, I keep wanting to say Stinky Pete, but that's the prospector from Toy Story. So, okay, again, I'll, I'll do some close-ups of um, the figures once I've opened them. So Goofy as C-3PO. A little tall for a protocol droid, I think, but, you know, we'll see. Okay, so we just had a little technical issue there, but it has been resolved, so we are moving on. Um, I'm not sure where, we, where things got haywire, so I'm just going to back up a little bit, talk a little bit about the Goofy figure and the points of articulation. Um, this is actually, of all the figures that I have unboxed in the Disney Star Wars crossover line, the, the Goofy figure is by far the closest to the regular setup of figures that we are used to, at least the five points of articulation. Okay, we got arm, arm, leg, leg, okay, and of course, turning head. So, um, pretty cool that they were able to do that. Um, I think that's really cool. So, I'll leave him, kind of, kind of put him back here. All right, why don't we next go with Donald Duck as Han Solo in Carbonite. This is kind of a two-pack. Well, at least two-pack in the sense that you have a figure and you have the Carbonite block. Now, um... I've always liked what they do with the Star Wars figures when it comes to this, when, it, when they normally come with the carbonite block. Normally it's like a, it's hollow on one end, and then you can, you know, on the back end, and you can just kind of stick the figure behind it, like as, as, if, it's, as if it's kind of filling in. They don't really do this with this one, and this is kind of cool too, though. They have um, the carbonite block, which I love how the fact that this one, and again, I'll get close-ups of this, you actually have a front and a back. And the back is three-dimensional as well. You actually see the back of Donald's head, you see his tail, you see a little bit of his feet and his elbow, and you even got a couple of feathers in there. Um, actually, I have a uh, another big thing that, and I'll probably go through some of these in the future, but I have what's called a big fig, which is a, um, a thing from Disney that was essentially a, a statue, like a little statue about this big. And they were releasing them you know, every couple of years. And they released a Donald and a Carbonite figure, which I thought was really, really fun. And I did get a Mickey, a Jedi Mickey one, and I think it, you know, the lightsaber lights up. And I think this one, the floor lights up. It's got that Bespin floor, I believe. So um, that's pretty cool, too. Now, the figure, again, uh, now this looks, yeah, it actually, in some, it works similarly to, wow, this one actually has, well, the legs don't really bend. I mean, they do, but it kind of just, <laughs> they swivel more. Because it's kind of got a rounded bottom. He has a waist that turns. So, and he's got um, wrists. And again, I've noticed that they've really started to go into some more things. I want to look in Goofy and see. Yeah, I apologize. Goofy has... Um, his waist doesn't turn, but his wrists do. So that's cool. So they've actually improved on the um, points of articulation. Um, he's got that... Uh, which, which is really cool because it allows him to hold his weapon. Which is a, basically, I think this is what he had when um, he was standing there and I think uh, uh, Chewie was trying to talk to him behind him about Boba Fett, Boba Fett, where? And he turns his thing and you know, that happens. Uh, the weapon is very pliable, it's very bendable, so you got to be careful there. But um, it does allow him to pretty much grip it tight, so that's cool. I love his hairpiece. It's just, it's just, it's, it's absolutely hysterical. So, um, yay on Donald in, oh, in and out of Carbonite. Okay, next up, we're going to go with, I'll go, we'll go with Jedi Mickey. Okay, and, um, Mickey Mouse, Jedi Knight. Oh, what's cool about this is that he comes, um, what is, he is actually, this is probably getting picked up by the mic, my apologies. He is actually wearing the tunic, the, the ever popular tunic. Now, the tunic, for those who don't understand, is, is kind of, in Star Wars lore, <laughs> the tunic is, you know, in Jedi, he had an entire black outfit. He had a black shirt and a black pair of trousers, black boots, and uh, riding boots, really, and his little black glove once he once his hand got damaged. And his, and I guess it was a black belt. Um, but he also wore, at the beginning, well, he wore a robe, or really it was just a cloak, 
And then he wore this kind of almost wool-looking tunic. It was this, just this piece, of, like a vest with a the belt kind of fit around it. And that's what he had on over it. And it was a cool-looking look. And he used it all through the whole Jabba's Palace thing. Which I always thought was funny because Jabba's Palace and Tatooine was the hottest place he was in. The absolute hottest, right? And then, he, you know, he wore that. To what? To stay warmer? I didn't quite get that. And then he goes up to the Death Star later on after Endor, and he takes it off. So it's kind of funny. But anyway, here he has it. And it looks like Luke in this case. He's got a little bit of pliability to his legs, but it's really just the waist that turns, and the arms, and I think the wrists, and the head swivels. And he's got that intense Mickey Mouse, you know, which you can do when you... When his brow goes down, and the black part of his brow goes down, it makes him look all, like, mean and, and bad. Like he's going to take on the Empire. So, really cool. Now, if I can keep him standing, that'd be better. So, stay. All right, there we go. Good. And his counterpart, of course. Of course, we've mentioned this before. It's kind of weird that they, they make Leia... It's kind of weird that they make Leia... Um... That's Minnie Mouse and Luke Mickey Mouse. Because when you think about it, Luke and Leia are brother and sister. And Han and Leia are lovers, but Mickey and Minnie are you know, lovers, but they're daters, date, date, dating, whatever. So it's a little bit strange to me. I don't know. Kind of don't know how I feel about it. All right, so... So again, you've got the similar to it, pretty much the body of Minnie and Mickey in these Star Wars are, are pretty much identical. Uh, the arms move. Um, there's a little bit of spinning on the waist, and it's good that the arms move because you actually have the ability to put the um, maybe eh, get in there. Okay, so you can actually put his or her weapon and just kind of hold it there. So that's good. Now this is the interesting part. If you recall in previous episodes, we had uh, Donald Duck wearing a helmet. It was when he was playing a stormtrooper. And the, horm the, the helmet, just it was like a clamshell. It kind of came out front to back, and you just kind of put it over him. Here, it looks like a similar thing, but the helmet doesn't come apart. But it's got a hole in the bottom. So forgive me, kids. I'm going to try something. I'm taking Minnie's head off and replacing it. Mm. Okay. So, now, and again, I'll do some pictures for close-up. Now you'll have mini, basically Minnie Mouse with two heads. With the Boosh mask head. But now, you have a mini head that's loose. Or you can just have it be the mini head. So, I'll show you both of those. This is kind of creepy. I think maybe somebody might have maybe gotten fired on this one. Because it seems kind of weird to see Minnie's head just sitting there by itself. You know, it's like one time we went... Backstage, um, I was, you know, with a marching band, and the marching band was a bunch of high school kids, and when you guys, when the marching band gets to march through um, Main Street, USA, they have to start backstage in Walt Disney World, and it's really a cool experience, except it can be a little jarring when you look around and you see characters without their heads on, which, you know, these are actors playing characters, and that does, in fact, happen. So uh, it could be a little bit jarring to see that. But, um, so we'll call this a throwback to that. All right, poor man. I'm going to just kind of hide Minnie's, Minnie's uh, head behind. Okay, and then last but certainly not least, we got Bad Pete. Not Stinky Pete, Bad Pete as Boba Fett. This thing is weighs a ton. I cannot even tell you. Oh, my goodness. He's also very, comes with a lot of stuff. You get all of his stuff out of the way here. Okay, so he's got a backpack, which we just kind of puzzle in there. It looks like it just locks in like that. He's got um, his helmet, which you can just rest on him like that. <laughs> now, it looks like in terms of his gun, I don't think he can do much more. I guess he can possibly hold the gun like this. Oh, yeah, fits like that. Fits right in his thing. He has like a little thumb and finger. And he, too, has some wrist movements. Whoops. And by the way, the wrist movements, I just lost his wrist. I'm going to... His wrist really just consists of his hand being kind of in a ball and socket type of thing. So we'll get him kind of locked in there. <laughs> All right. Um, kind of, he kind of has a hippo kind of 
kind of quality to him, like one of the dancing hippos from Fantasia. His feet do, do not move. They don't even swivel. And it looks like they're pretty much set. Sorry, they're, they're pretty much set there for perfect balance. Okay, so... And it does have an indentation in the inside of the hat for him to kind of place his ears. His head does spin. So when you put that in there, he can turn his helmet a little bit. Okay? Um, I, I like it. I like the setup of it. I'm not a big fan of this huge amount of just blankness in his stomach. Kind of like, like He's got like a pot belly that goes out like this. Um, I, I wish they would have done more with maybe either armor or, you know, padding or fabric or make it look something else. It just kind of looks, it looks out of place. Like if you look at the arms, there is like folds in the arm, like as if he's wearing fabric. But the stomach is just completely smooth. I mean, I suppose you could argue that if he was wearing any type of a uh, of a of a jumpsuit or whatnot, with his stomach being protruding like that, it would totally smooth it out. So I guess that's true. But um, you know, that's my only real complaint about it. But it's nice, and it does come with the backpack. You can take him. You can have him like hold the helmet, I guess, like this. Maybe. So I'm gonna keep the helmet on just because I think the, the helmet's kind of cool. I like the way the helmet's shaped, right? And as I said, I'll get some close-ups in there. So um, that'll do it for the. I think I'm pretty much done with the Disney. Although I'll look again. There might be more. Um, there were a lot of Disney, um, Disney Star Wars crossover figures. There were some more Muppets. I think I do have a few more Muppets to do. Um, and there were uh, a, a bunch of the Star Tours vehicles and, and robots and stuff. So I've done a lot of those. Um, I'm actually, and I think I put a lot of them in my little Star Tours vehicle right over here. Um, and maybe I will uh, see about getting some of these guys in there too. All right, but that'll do it for this week's episode of Darth Tubas, or I should say this episode of Darth Tubas Star Wars Unboxing Show. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button. Go on to Instagram and Twitter at Darth Tuba. I am there. I'm also um, on Facebook at Darth Tubas Star Wars Unboxing page. Email me DarthTuba77 at gmail.com. And if you have any questions, or what, you can either go there, or you can leave comments in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you.